everybody. Good morning, everybody. Just want to make sure um, everybody's online. Uh, the mayor, the judge, the city manager, the health uh, director. Uh, it appears we're all here, ready to go. We're gonna go get. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Thank you all for uh, your patience. Uh, we went ahead and changed our media briefing to 10 a.m. this morning because there's a lot we want to talk to you all about related to some of the changes that uh, that uh, Webb County and City of Laredo did together. Uh, we worked uh, last night till late to make sure the documents uh, were, were in order, and so. Um, we're prepared to proceed and show you uh, what what the city and the county are prepared to do today that will take effect tonight at midnight, 12.01. Uh, so with that, let's get directly into the report uh, from the health director, uh, and then we'll go uh, to the city manager, mayor, and judge like we typically do to talk about the order, and then we'll take questions. So let's go ahead and start with the health director. Uh, Dr. Gonzalez, go ahead, sir. Good morning, everybody. Um, wanted to report that uh, if you haven't shortly, uh, uh, the new um, news brief will tell you we have 19 cases now uh, that are positive. Uh, four are hospitalized, three in Laredo and, and one in San Antonio. Um, 12 of these are female, 10 are male. Um, everyone is recuperating. Three have been released from the quarantine. Um, and so we continue to monitor this, but certainly the positive persons show exactly what we've been saying, that it has to be a sustained close contact uh, because as you see, um, of, of the clusters, and, and some of these are family members. And so that close contact is, is what's um, being, being the mode of transmission. Quiero decirles que si ya no lo recibieron, lo van a recibir pronto. Hay 19 personas positivas. Cuatro de ellos están hospitalizados. Uno en San Antonio y tres aquí en Laredo. Todos están bien. Uh, lo que sí hemos notado que son agrupaciones, este, cuatro de los, de los casos son eh, personas familiares y otros, eh, los otros tres eran personas que trabajaban junto, uh, convivían junto. Y es lo que hemos dicho, este, este nuevo virus COVID-19, pues se eh, transmite a través de las, de las gotas respiratorias. A, a un contacto sostenido, diario y cercano. Um, de los casos, 12 son uh, mujeres, 10 son hombres. Las edades son de 21 a 61 años. Tres ya se les dio de alta. Allá terminaron su cuarentena y están bien. Entonces vuelvo a repetir las acciones que la ciudad ha tomado para reducir eh, um, que estén juntos. Uh, y aumentar la distancia es la mejor arma que tenemos ahorita, porque con lo que estamos viendo, los, las personas que se están uh, enfermando, pues son las personas de, de contacto diario, sostenido, cercano, en donde se pueden transmitir las gotas respiratorias. Again, you know, to the media, uh, the city is taking these actions of distancing and prevention of washing hands, of increasing hygiene, of staying at home, because that's right now the best weapon we have against COVID-19. Um, is that seven of the, of the 19 persons were all clusters, family members, close um, workers who um, not only work close every day, more than a couple of hours were together, but also socialized. Uh, and naturally the family members. Now, a good one of the family members, two persons are positive and two persons are negative. So not everyone is going to get sick. And that's what we've been saying. Some of us will not get sick. Some of us may have mild symptoms. Some of us will get sick with some symptoms and be okay at home. 
Some of us may complicate with pneumonia and some of us may wind up in the hospital. And so um, help us get the right information because it's too much anxiety. Vuelvo a repetir de, de los casos que, que hemos confirmado. Um, todos están bien estables, pero el contacto por los, las agrupaciones que, que, que tenemos han sido contacto sostenido, cercano, en donde se transmiten las gotas respiratorias. Uh, y sin embargo, no todos se van a enfermar. En, en una familia, dos son positivos y dos negativos. Y entonces lo que hemos estado diciendo todo este tiempo, está aquí el virus ya, se está acomodando en, en este mundo. Algunos no nos vamos a enfermar, algunos nos vamos a enfermar con síntomas leves o ningún síntoma. Algunos vamos a tener unos síntomas respiratorios que podemos tratarlos en casa. Algunos vamos a tener que ir al hospital y también vamos a recuperar y algunos van a tener complicaciones. Efectivamente, de los casos que tenemos hospitalizados, o son inmunocomprometidos o tienen problemas crónicos. Diabetes, hipertensión, enfermedad del corazón, enfisema. Y eso pues pone una sobrecarga cuando hay una infección viral. Entonces, por eso, la mejor arma que tenemos uh, en cuanto esperamos uh, antivirales y vacuna es la prevención. Y la prevención a través de distancia, um, de quedarse en casa. Si tenemos catarro, quedarse en casa, llamarle al médico, no ir al médico. Um, and so again, you know, stay at home if you're sick. Uh, don't go to the doctor, call your doctor. Unless you have serious uh, problems, uh, shortness of breath and high fevers, and still call your doctor. I want to also say that this is the time, and, and I want to thank Dr. Luis Benavides from our Physician Task Force um, and Sister Maria Lisa, who reminded us that this is the time for all, also all of us to be wary of our role modeling, because if we're anxious and panicky, children and others around us will be anxious and panicky. And also, this is the time to stay healthy. Just because you're at home and want to stay at home doesn't mean you don't walk around, walk on the block. Uh, one or two of you not in large groups. This is why we shut down the parks. Um, so yes, run, jump in, in, around your house, in your garden, uh, walk. And Dr. Benavides said, for those of you who have uh, treadmills, take the clothes off and get on the treadmill uh, because we need to stay healthy. And for those who have conditions, diabetes, hypertension, heart, HIV, take your medicine. Please don't stop taking your medicine. Call your doctor. Many of them have websites that they have instructions for, for their doctors. Quiero agradecer este, el, el los consejos que el doctor Luis Benavides y el doctor Vector Trevino en la Autoridad de Salud y el director médico del Departamento de Salud que también le avisan al público que con las indicaciones y las normas que se están haciendo de quedarse en casa, de no estar en agrupaciones, no quiere decir que no estén activos, aunque los parques estén cerrados en su casa, pueden brincar, pueden correr, pueden caminar la cuadra. Lo que no queremos es que estén en grupos uh, y que guarden distancia. Como ya les expliqué, los enfermos son los que han estado en, 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 en muy cerca a cada uno por largos tiempos. Entonces, que estén activos, que usen este tiempo para reflejar y ante todo de, de quedarnos saludables, duerman bien ser activos, comer bien, bastante líquido, vitamina C, verduras, nueces. Uh, para esas personas que tienen corredores en la casa, el doctor Luis Benavides les dice, quiten esa ropa que la usan como colgador y úsenla para ejercicio, para caminar. Tenemos que mantener nuestra salud. Personas que tienen otras enfermedades, sigan con su tratamiento. Diabéticos, chequen su glucosa. Uh, sigan con su medicina. Personas con presión alta. Sigan con su medicina. Personas que tienen asma, sigan con su medicina. Las farmacias siguen abiertas. Chief, that's my, my report. Thank you, doctor. Real quick, before we get you off, um, you said 10 female and 10 male. That adds up to 22. Sorry, 12 female and 10 male. That adds up to uh, 
22, not the 19. 19. And that was put on the chat. And I don't know if you saw that off to the right. So that might be something that. Uh, Let me correct that. It's 12, 12, 12 females and seven males. Thank you. So, so let me let me correct it on, on, on the chat. Thank you so much. OK, let's move on over to the city manager to talk about uh, the new the new direction that we're taking as a city and county. Thank you, Chief. Uh, thank you, everyone. Again, uh, the media, you are important to us, as always. Uh, please continue doing what you're doing. Uh, we appreciate it. So uh, the mayor is going to uh, speak to the the shelter in place order and, and the more specifics to it. What I'd like to just point out are a couple of things, just a basic general um, uh, comments as to what this means and, and maybe on the curfew side. So um, what basically will remain as, as we discussed yesterday, uh, everything related to food, shelter, medical, uh, the supply chains that provide us will we'll continue. Uh, what we're, um, restricting are the gatherings, social gatherings, uh, those those 10 people or more. So we've got a guiding document that everybody should should have received. You as media should have received one, the order uh, of the mayor, and then a fact sheet, and then a quick uh, also listing of, of definitions. And so that, that everyone can be reading off the same page. And, and let me just say, just generally speaking, so everything that's that's been um, restricted remains restricted. What's changed is that we're adding even more restrictions. And so as we're working through this, because we don't want to further complicate it, we don't want to uh, increase uh, anxiety because people don't understand this, but just think about it this way. We have current restrictions and we've added even more restrictions. And so we're tightening this more so that we can have fewer people out on the streets. The details, I mean, we couldn't list every available uh, scenario, but this should be the guiding document for us. So we're, we're working through this with you. This is a, a standard um, order that, that we worked off, mostly based off uh, Austin. And so just know that those basic services will remain. So les quiero uh, decir que eh, lo que estamos haciendo con estas orden y el alcalde va, va a hablar tocante de eso, pero para mí es, es explicar y, y decirles um, que, que ya mandamos o estamos mandando ya la orden a, a todos los medios, uh, ahorita se, se lo estamos mandando, y una lista um, de donde tenemos unas notas de, de donde uh, nos dice eh, qué se puede hacer, qué no se puede hacer. Pero como platicamos ayer, eh, lo que se queda es todo lo que viene siendo de, de comidas, de, de su uh, sa salud uh, y de, de cosas tipo que, que son... Um, relacionado con eso. Todo eso eh, queda. Pero lo que tenemos, las órdenes que tenemos ahorita, lo que estamos haciendo es agregándole más órdenes eh, porque nos están, uh, lo está dirigiendo el, el director eh, de salud. El medical authority nos está diciendo que, que es, es, se requiere hacer esto. Y antes que paso, and before I pass it on to the, to the mayor, I do want to remind people of this too, because I think this is incredibly important. Your psychological health, people that are at home right now as well, we have a, a vulnerable population that, that may be sitting at home and, and depression might set in. And, and we need to be very fine tuned to recognize that. Re remember your neighbor, remember your family members that may be struggling through this and, and don't understand this. Take charge of that reach out to them, make a phone call. Uh, let's not let our, our community uh, get further um, unhealthy mentally uh, because depression is one key to this that, that we need to work through. So please uh, remember your neighbor, please remember uh, your family members and, and, and take care of, of, of individuals. Don't, don't let people isolate by themselves and just remain isolated. Yes, we distance ourselves, but we don't cut ourselves off from, from contact. We must remain in communication with each other because only that way through communication are we gonna get through this as a community. So speak to your neighbors, speak to your family, speak to your friends, stay healthy mentally as well as physically. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, uh, City Manager Eats. Uh, Mr. Mayor, go ahead, sir. 
Yeah, yeah thank you, Chief, and thank you, uh, Dr. Gonzalez, uh, the city manager as well. Thank you for all the good work that, that you, Robert, and, and, and management staff, and all, all the city employees, and of course, uh, the uh, good working relationship that we have with the uh, county judge and his people as well. Uh, so this is a united front. Uh, uh, I, we know that a good measure of a, of a city is how we treat you know, the more, uh, the most vulnerable in our society. Uh, and I think we're stepping up to that. Uh, uh, yesterday, you all may recall, uh, uh, former President Bill Clinton, uh, speaking to uh, uh, the U.S. mayors, said that we're going to be okay, and uh, but it's going to be hell to get there, <laughs> and that's and I think we're all uh, feeling that uh, sensation. Uh, you know, also it reminds me of Winston Churchill, uh, who uh, said, "You must do two things in a crisis, and that's be brutally honest about what is happening and offer a rational basis uh, uh, for hope." Uh, as the city manager uh, stated, and, and Dr. Gonzalez, uh, today uh, I'm announcing a shelter in place, and that's that stay at home, work safe uh, order. Uh, and, and why? Uh, to, to mitigate the spread of this uh, COVID 19. Uh, uh, yes, it brings in further restrictions, uh, but they've been recommended by our health authority uh, in order to stop people from congregating and, and spreading the virus. Uh, uh, this is for the health of the community. Uh, if the disorder takes effect uh, 12 o'clock uh, a.m. midnight uh, this Saturday. Uh, well, it's really 12.01 a.m. Uh, uh, this Saturday morning, March uh, the 28th. Uh, <coughs> yes, this is a legal order. Uh, you know, everyone must comply. Uh, uh, police officers uh, will be enforcing this order and will be giving citations. And, uh, and arresting, it carries a, an arrest uh, a component to this. Uh, for those who do not comply, this is serious business. Uh, uh, again, what is the difference between this order and our previous order? Uh, our city manager, uh, he alluded to that and he mentioned uh, some points, but let me also reemphasize, uh, this order prohibits social gatherings of any kind outside of the immediate family unit, you know, unless for reasons specified as essential activities. Uh, we have essential activities and we have non-essential activities uh, and we all need to focus on this uh, the essential activities also uh, include ensuring the health and safety of yourself and of course your family uh, engaging in outdoor activity that does not involve close contact with other people like the doctor just mentioned uh, you know pinning services and supplies for yourself uh, and your family uh, and, per and yes performing employment functions that are permissible, again, that are permissible to the essential reasons and purposes that we're uh, uh, misstating here. Uh, and of course, this is all uh, uh, listed and described under this uh, stay at home, work, work safe order. Uh, this is important too, uh, and the city manager mentioned it as well. Uh, what businesses and stores must close under this order? The uh, businesses that we had uh, that that uh, were closed under the prior order continue, but we've added more. Uh, so let me list them. Um, bars, lounges, and private clubs, uh, fitness centers, gyms, yoga studios, studios, and all other place where pe places where people go for further, uh, uh, for purposes of engaging in any form of physical exercise, bingos and amusement redemption centers, reception halls and party rental places, enclosed malls, uh, Entertainment facilities such as bowling alleys, movie theaters, etc., uh, massage parlors, food courts, adult daycare uh, centers, uh, barber shops now, hair and nail salons, uh, estheticians, uh, uh, and related personnel care businesses, uh, tattoos and piercing parlors, and tanning salons. And uh, as to retail stores, they may stay open if they follow through with protective measures and implement online order delivery or curbside services. Uh, the essential businesses will remain open. And we know uh, we, we, we visited them, uh, grocery stores, gas stations, banks, uh, gov government entities and businesses that provide essential services, hardware uh, stores such as Home Depot, Lowe's, Dr. Ike's, McCoy's and others that uh, we have others on. Uh, Healthcare operations, uh, those are permissible. Uh, hotels and motels, uh, you know, except for the restaurants uh, there within the uh, hotels, motels, and the dining areas located therein, you know, those aren't 
uh, those what we can't use uh, uh, businesses that sell guns uh, healthcare operations essential uh, critical infrastructure and essential governmental functions as well uh, and we have others uh, and i know it may seem complicated but it's important that we pay close attention to the details uh, uh, so the message again is to stay home uh, the only way we can stop this is everyone does their part to stop the spread uh, and that's that's a key uh, uh, you are the best person to make sure someone else doesn't get sick. And I understand this is a stressful situation. Uh, some of us are undergoing uh, uh, huge sacrifices, uh, but it'll be well worth it uh, if it saves a life, uh, if it saves a uh, serious uh, health risk, which this disease or this uh, this pandemic can create. Uh, we've seen it in other cities, and we've been blessed that that uh, yes, the positives have been going up, but uh, the, the majority of these folks uh, still are, are well, doing well, they're stable. Um, some are hospitalized, but I'm told that they're stable, and that's very good, uh, but it could get worse. Uh, so in other words, uh, make sure to take care of your physical and mental uh, uh, stability uh, during this time. Uh, are there many resources in the state and federal government to help those who are unable to make ends meet? Uh, and for businesses who are struggling, uh, we'll be putting out more information as to those areas. Uh, we don't have a timeline of how long this could last. Uh, we don't choose a date. Uh, the virus uh, chooses uh, a date. Uh, you must be patient and comply in the meantime. So again, by staying apart, we will stick together. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Robert. Thank you, Mayor. Let's uh, have the county judge, uh, Tijerina, go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. Muchísimas gracias a todos, el alcalde, um, a todos que estamos ahorita. Déjame, let me put the. Very good, aquí está. Okay, el video. Buenos, buenos días uh, al alcalde y todos los que estamos trabajando, el chief Landini. Y todos, hay mucha gente que estamos en esto junto y estamos trabajando la noche. Estuvimos la junta hasta como las diez y media de la noche, pero ahí sí estamos por la gente porque se, se necesita. Todo lo que le pido a toda la gente que sí, estamos uh, ahorita en el proceso de uh, ya se va ya se va a finalizar el shelter in place que se dice en shelter in place es refugio, refugio en sus hogares uh, que para nosotros teníamos que poner esas medidas porque realmente los doctores lo estaban diciendo que la gente, ellos estaban sintiendo que la gente del condado, de la, de la ciudad de Laredo, no estaban haciendo su parte, uh, no, están poniendo, uh, caso, uh, no están poniendo atención a la orden. So para nosotros era muy importante porque sin, sin la gente no se va a poder ser. Esto no lo va a poder ser el gobierno solo, el condado, el, 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 la ciudad. Esto va a tener que ser una comunidad juntos, unidos y y estar a, arriba de todo esto. Para nosotros, yo todo lo que le pido es que tengan atención a las... Ponga la atención, por favor, a todas las advertencias. Es muy, es muy importante. Um, por favor, les pido a todos los... Uh, Toda la gente que está de la, de, de, de la prensa, que por favor ayúdenos siguiendo decir las mismas cosas, pero un poquito más y más y más para que ya tengan esto en la, en la cabeza, porque realmente unidos vamos a... a, a de, ya declaramos guerra al virus. No es guerra contra nosotros. Ahorita es tiempo que lo vayamos a unir a esta ciudad. Guys, I want to thank you all very much for this morning. Good morning. I just want to thank everyone for being. Uh, I, I just want to compliment the mayor and, and the city manager and Chief Landin and, and all the staff that's working behind the scenes. Last night, we probably had a meeting till about 1030 last night, uh, teleconferencing uh, with uh, Chief Trevino and, and just all the stakeholders. And, and it was a really, um, it, it's a really trying time for all of us. And I understand. Uh, one thing that I do want to stress, and it's really important, is it, it is mental health is extremely important at this time. I've been a big mental health advocate since I've taken office. I will continue being one. So we need the media to help us out as much as as much as possible to make sure 
that we are keeping calm and, and we keep repeating these, uh, these warnings for everybody to be safe. It's really important. We are in this together. We will get through this together. Let's all do our part and stay home, stay safe. Let's show other counties how it's done because we are, let's not forget, we are the best county in the state of Texas. And this is the only way we're gonna get through this. We, our order is a shelter in place order with a stay at home, work safe. Um, there is some changes a little bit. Uh, it's really important. We do have a curfew now. The only thing that we did with a curfew is from uh, 10 to six, and that is for juvenile, 10 to, 10 to five, I'm sorry, and that is for juvenile only. So all we did is extended that juvenile curfew, 17 and under, from 10 to five. So again, we ask that everybody would adhere to these warnings. We ask that everybody would adhere to the order that we have put out for the city of Laredo and Webb County. I think we've done a, an exceptional job. I will end with this. History has taught that mankind is resilient and we will emerge, emerge stronger. God bless you guys and this is all I have. Thank you, Judge. Okay, let's look at the questions now uh, to see what's come in. Uh, Chief, Go eh, ahead. Quisiera que el alcalde nos lo explicara en español también para, para la comunidad que necesitamos este, difundirlo en ese idioma. Very good. Mr. Mayor, go ahead. Sí, con todo gusto, Miguel. Sí, como bien saben, hoy firmamos una orden, es, es una orden de refugio en casa y, y que trabajen de la casa. El propósito es que el, el público se quede en su lugar, en sus casas. Uh, si hay cosas esenciales uh, que eh, lleva a cabo ciertas actividades que son uh, uh, que no son prohibidas que se pueden hacer y hay otras que sí están prohibidas y hay que poner mucha atención en esas listas uh, el city manager uh, y otros también del condado van a uh, difundir uh, esta información a ustedes todos los medios y, y al público en general para que nos demos cuenta qué exactamente es permitido y qué no es uh, y lo que queremos es, es no transmitir este virus. Ese es el propósito, quedarnos en casa, no transmitir, no exponer a, a otra gente, uno mismo también. Nos informan también que ya los números de positivos ya aumentaron. Y eso es una indicación que, que el virus está muy presente aquí. Por la gracia de Dios, por la suerte que hemos tenido, va Esta gente no se ha habido, no se ve uh, muy, muy mal, pero como siempre hemos dicho, uh, este virus tiene la capacidad, uh, la, la potencia de, de matar gente. Uh, uh, ojalá no lleguemos, no lleguemos a ese punto, uh, pero hay que hacer todo lo posible para prevenir eso. Los médicos, la comunidad médica, uh, nos, nos dijo ayer precisamente uh, que hay que aumentar uh, la prevención, las medidas, uh, y es precisamente por eso estamos firmando esta orden, el juez y yo, para, para que uh, la gente, el público, tome esto muy en serio. Uh, uh, y, uh, y se va a requerir mucho sacrificio, entendemos eso, uh, especialmente los negocios que, que estamos prohibiendo. Uh, Yo entiendo, yo también he, he tenido negocios, hay gente también que tiene negocios ahorita y uh, invirtiendo dinero, tienen sus empleados, uh, es un sacrificio muy grande. Uh, pero les pedimos que por favor uh, uh, lo hagan para el bien de la comunidad, uh, para el bien de la salud y el mejoramiento de nuestro uh, pueblo. Uh, y uh, ojalá, y esto, ojalá esto pase rápido, pronto. Uh, pero no sabemos, uh, no sabemos el curso, uh, el, el periodo que, que va a durar uh, con este uh, cargo tan terrible que nos ha caído uh, uh, con este virus, uh, el, el COVID-19. Uh, y, uh, y nomás les pedimos a la gente su, su totalmente plena cooperación uh, y, y vamos a salir adelante. Uh, somos un pueblo fuerte, uh, un pueblo como que cuida a los a los más débiles entre nosotros, uh, 
Y ese es el tiempo, esa es la prueba uh, de si somos la herencia o no, si somos gente de corazón uh, para proteger uh, a nuestra gente. Y, y, uh, y les pido uh, que por favor sigan las, las, las normas, si sí están pesadas, uh, pero es por el bien de la comunidad. Queremos salir adelante. Y, y... Alcalde, ¿podría este, enumerar algunas de esas, no todas, pero algunas que son las más esenciales para que nuestra comunidad las escuche de su voz? Gracias, Miguel. Gracias. Sí, con todo gusto. Bueno, ya que empezar con las actividades que, que, son, que están prohibidas, uh, los bares, uh, los clubes privados, uh, uh, los gimnasios, uh, los estudios para yoga, uh, generalmente los lugares donde hay ejercicios físicos, uh, los bingos también no son permitidos, uh, las maquinitas no son permitidas, uh, los, uh, los salones de recepción, uh, los salones que, uh, privados que se rentan para los polis o fiestas tampoco, uh, uh, los malls uh, que están cerrados, estos también están prohibidos. Uh, uh, cualquier uh, negocio de, 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 de la recreación, uh, entertainment que le llamamos uh, como los bowling alleys, el bolicho, uh, las películas, movie theaters, uh, los lugares para masajes, massage parlors que le llamamos, uh, uh, food courts, uh, esos uh, lugares donde hay varios restaurantes y, y hay ofrecen comidas, uh, uh, los, uh, los cuidados para la gente de la tercera edad, adult daycare, uh, también los peluqueros, uh, 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 salones para las uñas, uh, uh, y otros negocios muy parecidos a eso también están prohibidos. Uh, uh, negocios de tatu, tatu, uh, piercing parlor, donde uh, le ponen aretes, uh, y los salones para tanning, uh, para uh, cambiar el color del cuchillo. Uh, 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 también, uh, y, y si los lugares que sí son permitidos, como bien sabemos, uh, no hemos uh, uh, ido nosotros muy seguidos, somos. Uh, las tiendas de mandado, los ATV, los Walmart, esos otros, ¿no? las estaciones de gasolina son permitidas, ¿no? los bancos, ¿no? las entidades financieras, todo esto permitido, ¿no? las entidades de gobierno, ¿no? el, el, el gobierno tiene que seguir, sí va a haber ciertas restricciones, ¿no? pero por mayor parte siguen abiertas. ¿no? ¿No? Hardware stores, que le llamamos como Home Depot, Lowe's, Autoride, o Toys, ¿no? Uh, estos siguen abiertos también y, y hay muchos más que estos. ¿no? Uh, operaciones sobre la salud, por cierto, seguro, uh, es lo más importante hoy en día. Uh, hoteles, moteles también, uh, con la excepción de los restaurantes que están contenidos ahí, uh, estos no. Uh, a menos que haya club, side, que pueden sacar la comida como otros restaurantes uh, lo están haciendo. ¿no? Uh, lugares donde se venden armas, uh, eso está permitido también. ¿no? Y cualquier tipo de, de negocio sobre la salud, ¿no? el, el bienestar ¿no? de, de la persona uh, y, uh, y uh, todas los, las funciones de un, de un municipio, de, de un condado también, con ciertas restricciones uh, sobre uh, prohibición también de que hay que mantener esa distancia y la higiénica también, ¿no? las, las prácticas de mejores de, de higiénica. El punto thank principal. you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, thank sir. you, thank Mr. You. Mayor. They can see it. It's in the order that we're providing for everybody as well. Uh, that was a very good detailed explanation, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, there's a question related to. Um, Well, first, I want the police chief to talk uh, related to enforcement, and and then uh, we'll get on and and uh, clarify uh, some other questions. I want to remind the media that Rafael is going to send all of this out to you, the written document, so that you can study it as well and help us inform the public in English and in Spanish as to what's in the document. Okay, so so that. We don't spend a lot of time trying to 
get into each and every one of the possibilities. Um, this is again a document that 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 is uh, that has a lot of uh, of, of uh, things that are in it that aren't that 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 uh, hopefully you'll able to be able to sort through it and read through it, and then uh, then then we're happy to answer all the questions. So let's go to the police chief. Go ahead, chief. Chief Trevino, go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chief, and uh, thanks all the media partners for coming together to get the, the real information, the truth behind the, the order amendments or modifications that are being made. Just to let everybody know, the police department has been working with the, with the order that's in place now uh, for over a week now. We have been uh, receiving calls, responding to those calls, but most importantly, and, and, and the numbers show, uh, we're being very proactive ourselves, uh, our officers, investigative teams, they go out there and proactively look at the order and make sure that people are following the guidelines. We will continue to do so with the modifications that, that were provided with this update. Uh, now the, the, uh, the offense escalates while the, the fine goes down to just a thousand dollars. If you, if you remember before it was 2000. Uh, now it's up to a thousand dollars, but now it carries a, an arrest. So we we will be effecting arrest if using, of course, discretion if needed. Um, repeat violators, people that are paying to comply with the warnings um, that, that the officers give. We've already contacted uh, the sheriff's office, and, and thank also the sheriff's office for, for the great support they've been providing in the enforcement here in the city. Um, and we've already make plans if, if there needs to be an arrest there will be an arrest so we urge people to follow the order stay at home the order is uh, stay at home and work safe we ask the public to do that our officers again are actively engaging people out in the community using reasonable suspicion will be the, the course to we make contacts and see what you're doing out there it, it's really truly necessary for you to be out there are you conducting essential business or are you just out there uh, unnecessarily. If that's if that's what is seen, we'll be issuing citations. And again, now it carries uh, an arrest as well if, if necessary. So the numbers show that uh, our officers are actively looking at the parks. The citations that we issue are primarily now seen at the parks. So we ask the public, we ask everyone to to use other means of recreation or, or getting out there to reduce stress. Use your sidewalks, stay within your, your neighborhoods. No need to go to the park unnecessarily. Um, the, the, the kids, the curfew that, that's imposed that was modified for juveniles, we're going to be enforcing juvenile offenses uh, of uh, curfew that we see out there. No need to be out there on your own. If you need to, as a juvenile, if you need to be out there, there's no need to be out there without your parent, uh, one of your parents, uh, an adult family member. So, again, Proactively, we're looking at this order. We'll be enforcing. We, we are looking at the recommendations from our medical professionals that need to, to exercise and to amend this. I mean, to enforce this uh, this order is important. And all our officers are prepared to, to make that contact and make sure that the order is being followed. So, in Espanol, vamos a estar trabajando con esta orden. Esta orden nos indica que nos quedemos en casa, que trabajamos, trabajemos seguro. Y es lo que vamos a estar trabajando con los oficiales. Recibimos llamadas a nuestro centro de no emergencia, pero más importante lo que está pasando, nuestros oficiales están haciendo estos contactos, visitando estos negocios, visitando los parques, asegurándonos de que nadie está en violación de esta, de esta orden que se dio. Vamos a seguir trabajando um, con nuestros compañeros del condado para, para enforzar estas, estas violaciones, que ahora la violación carga una multa de hasta mil dólares, pero también puede ser arrestado. Puede ser arrestado y esos arrestos se van a efectuar si, si es una violación. Si es una persona que no está, no está haciendo caso, no quiere, no quiere cumplir con la orden, se va a hacer el arresto y, y, y el sheriff del, del condado está preparado para recibir estos arrestados y procesarse. Así que les pedimos que observen la orden, pongan atención, quédense en casa si no hay necesidad de, de salir. Y también vamos a estar efectuando uh, multas a menores de edad, juveniles que están en las calles después de las 10, de 10 a 6 de la mañana. No hay necesidad para estos jóvenes que estén en las, en las calles. Se les pide que se queden en casa y si hay alguna necesidad de salir, 
que salgan con sus padres, con algún adulto miembro de la familia. Y estos muchachos que no salgan a los parques, los parques son unas, unas áreas donde se están viendo violaciones. Si hay necesidad de salir a, a agarrar aire, como dijo la, la orden, quédense en, cerquita de sus colonias, de sus casas, en, su, en, en las banquetas y salgan a agarrar sol, pero manteniéndose fuera de nuestros parques, fuera de los parques donde evitemos el contacto con nuestra gente. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Okay, the next question uh, will be, uh, will City Council have a special meeting before this order expires, or can it be extended by the mayor and county judge discretion? Chief. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so the current order expires uh, Thursday, April 2nd. Uh, we are asking the City Council to hold a special City Council uh, Tuesday, uh, March 31st. And so that the uh, order can be revisited and possibly extended at the discretion of the city council. So we'll, we'll, we'll have that. So, um, para contestar esa pregunta, la orden eh, se termina uh, el 2 de abril y vamos a tener eh, probablemente una junta el 31 de marzo, eh, ma eh, martes. Eh, para el concilio para que, para que puedan decidir si lo van a extender o cambiar o, o X. Um, and now, past that, Chief, I, I wanted to touch on a couple things that I think this will explain a lot. There's there's a one of the major changes in, in, in our order, because remember, we already have restrictions. And so what we're doing is adding more restrictions. So to be clear, one of the major, a couple major points is retail stores. So retail stores, the way we had it before is that, and these are the ones that are non-essential. I'm not talking about the Walmarts that provide food or the HBs. I'm talking retail stores, the, like department stores, uh, tiendas departamentales. Uh, we've, that, we've changed that to where you can only uh, work through online orders or curbside. Uh, that is a major change, obviously, than what we had. So lo que estamos cambiando de tiendas departamentales Es que no se pueden estar abiertos, no más pueden trabajar lo que es el online order o si pueden hacer el trabajo eh, eh, ahí de, de curbside, eh, como lo pueden manejar, porque lo que eh, estamos viendo es la gente está en esas tiendas y, y eso es lo que estamos cambiando. Aparte de eso también, uh, the other piece too is the convenience stores. And one of the major changes that we've, we've instituted too, we're talking about gas station type convenience stores. We changed the order to where uh, before they were just clearly excluded entirely in the order to where they were an allowed uh, type business. What we've done in this order is said no more than 10 people in uh, these type convenience stores, these gas stations. Uh, because we're seeing way too many people, uh, you know, we, we, the police officers walk in and they see 20, 30 people uh, at a stripes, as an example, we can have that. And so what we've done is ratchet it down again to uh, 10 people or less at a convenience stores. So lo que estamos cambiando también de, de las gasolineras, uh, tiendas de conveniencia, uh, antes estaban, uh, no estaban prohibidos, no tenían ningún um, restricción. En esta orden lo que estamos cambiando es no pueden tener más de 10 personas en estas tiendas, estas gasolineras o tiendas de conveniencia. Eh, tienen que ser menos de, de 10 personas. So eso, es, eso es un cambio que, que sí está uh, más eh, adicional a la orden que, que tuvimos. So para explicarles y dándoles los pedazos, los pedacitos que vamos cambiando, Eh, así vamos paso a paso uh, poniendo más y más restricciones y, y por eso les, les quería explicar ese, ese uh, nueva uh, parte de la orden. Thank you, City Manager Eads. It, uh, you explained it well in English and in Spanish. And I'm looking on the thread to see if we have any more typed in questions. And I think I think you. you I think everything was kind of covered basically. I think it's very important to point out the difference and you did. So thank you for that. Okay. 
Okay, uh, there's no additional new questions. Uh, the county uh, responded to the order from their perspective, from their point. The commissioner's court on March 23rd extended the county judge's emergency order. Uh, he can continue the emergency order countywide. So his is lined up with ours. We're walking together on this. Can someone talk about why it took almost 24 hours to release the details of the shelter in place order after it was announced Thursday? Why not, why not make the announcement and issue the details simu, uh, simultaneously? Uh, I, I can I can try to answer that. I mean, we got the the mayor and the judge, but to you know, for our our public, uh, we did want to make sure that people understood that we were not uh, sitting, lying in wait, not doing anything uh, on this. We understood we were getting there, but we wanted to be sure and clear on the details, and we also wanted to be in agreement uh, with all parties involved. And so we would we took the measure to say, please understand. Uh, general public that we are working towards this. We are not uh, sitting here not considering this, but we will then come back to you with an order that makes sense for the city of Laredo, the county of Webb collectively. And that's that's why it was separated and, and, and done apart because we wanted to make sure the information and the order that we gave was clear, concise, and true to what we need for Laredo for, for you know, I, you know, I won't speak for Webb County, but, but for Webb County as well. But that's the reason why the separation. We wanted to let our people know we're working for you. We we get this, uh, but we also we don't we need to make sure that that we uh, we do the right thing and we give you the right information. Yes. Um, now let's, uh, Doctor Gonzalez. Why was one person hospitalized in San Antonio and not in Laredo? Uh, that's coming in as a question, Doctor Gonzalez. Um, I think what's important here, Chief, uh, the person is, is, is well, is stable. I, I can't um, address why the, the medical staff at the hospital decided to do that, um, but they're the ones who take the prudent clinical care of what's the best treatment. Our hospitals are, are superb, they're state of the art, but the clinicians seeing this person um, decided to transport and so, uh, I, I, I can't speak for that, but what is important, the person is doing very well, and, and I think that's important. If I can chime in to, to again, of the of why the order, the, the medical community and the medical committee made out of, of several physicians and the hospitals, you know, and I already answered it, assess the clustering and continues to cluster, and that's the close gathering. So based on that, this is why the committee recommended to our city and county officials, but at the same time, we want it to be prudent. We, we don't want there to be more anxiety that people have access to food, that people have access to, to medicine and healthcare. Uh, some persons were not refilling their prescriptions. No, pharmacies are open. And so this was done with a lot of, of consensus and, and analysis, and so, as the, as the city manager said and the, and the mayor and judge, this, 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 a lot of thought went into it. One of the things that I want to do in continuing to make sure that we don't uh, promote anxiety uh, is for pe because of this shelter in place, still no reason to go and stockpile. Um, having said that, we know that still people are having difficulty getting milk and getting eggs and getting toilet paper. And so one of the things that we've told the, the restaurants who have, uh, they buy in bulk, and since they cannot um, sell a, a sit down, only take out or drive by, that because they're certified and licensed to manage food, they could also start selling milk, eggs, bread, coffee, uh, even toilet paper if they have it. The important thing is, Oh, this is no reason to buy in bulk. Este, como, como se, como, en cuanto a la pregunta por qué el, eh, la persona se mandó a San Antonio, yo no puedo hablar por los médicos y el asesoramiento que hicieron eh, en trasladarlo a San Antonio. Lo importante que hay que enfocarnos es que está bien la persona. Y por X razón se tomó esa decisión, aunque nuestros hospitales son 
un hospital es con expertos con muy buen servicio. Y nomás para um, clarificar uh, en, en cuanto a la, la orden, los, el comité médico que se tiene en eh, salud, en, en conjunción con ellos, vio, analizó, como ya lo dije en el, por escrito, que 10 de las personas positivas eran clústeres, eran agrupaciones. Era eso lo que hemos estado di diciendo, que COVID-19 um, afecta la transmisión, es por, por contactos sostenidos cercano por vía respiratoria. Entonces, la mejor arma es la distancia, pero se tomó mucho cuidado, con mucho análisis de hacer la norma para que no vaya a perjudicar a nadie en cuanto a comida, uh, elementos esenciales. Es que por eso se tomó, uh, pero de todos modos se hizo algo más estricto porque no queremos que la gente se agrupe. Y por favor, este, ayúdenos a pasar esa información um, para así disminuir la transmisión de este virus. Thank you, Chief. Doctor, tengo, tengo dos preguntas. Primera, eh, los hospitales, ¿qué equipamiento necesitan? ¿Quién se los está dotando? Eh, o si son, van a recibir fondos del gobierno para, para ello. Segundo, las, el grupo de personas que están bajo investigación. Vamos, vamos, a, la primera, vamos a la primera, porque se, se van a juntar. Ya le hemos okay. dicho, ya le hemos dicho que la ciudad, el condado, a través del comité de médico, está trabajando con toda la comunidad médica y hospitales para conseguir todo el equipamiento, materiales para exámenes, para uh, cubrebocas, cubreojos, batas. Entonces estamos trabajando juntos porque hay una escasez nacional, no es, no es un problema local, es nacional. Y entonces la ciudad ha tomado una posición muy agresiva de hacer una búsqueda con manufacturadores que, de equipo médico para comprar para toda la ciudad y compartirlo en, en, en coordinación con todos. Ahorita los hospitales tienen, pero les va a faltar si pronto no conseguimos. Entonces, eh, todos juntos, me llega a, a través de nuestro eh, director de compras, eh, el señor pescador, este, me llega una, un aviso de que esta persona a lo mejor tiene guantes. Nosotros hacemos un pedido y se lo mando luego, luego a los hospitales y a los médicos también. Entonces, de esa manera estamos trabajando para el equipo médico y también para um, los cuadros para hacer los análisis. Ok, ¿cuál es la segunda pregunta? La segunda pregunta, doctor, es del grupo de personas que todavía están bajo escrutinio o bajo análisis, son los únicos que han estado en contacto, como usted lo ha, bien, lo ha manejado, y, y no ha habido otros casos que se hayan reportado de ese grupo. Ok, no sé si le entiendo bien. Okay, so, uh, one second. Doctor, um, after this question, I mean, he's, he's coming in without any order. Uh, okay. So... Go, go ahead and answer this question, and I already mentioned it to everybody. I'd like for you all to type in your questions uh, so that we can look at them and then we can answer them without people just starting to cut in and talk over other people. So go ahead and answer this one, and everybody follow that direction. Go ahead, doctor. Thank you, Chief. Um, tenemos 20 personas positivas. Todos los médicos están reportando a quien les hacen análisis. Entonces ya hemos compartido la información de cuántas personas son uh, dentro de los 20 casos, uh, este, los 19 casos, perdón. Este, ya dijimos que nueve de ellos son agrupaciones y por eso el análisis se hizo, que son transmisión entre ellos mismos. Um, y por eso queremos reforzar la distancia, quedarse en casa, porque para disminuir... Aún no, no es lo que hemos dicho, no todos van a enfermar. En una familia que tenemos dos personas positivas, tenemos dos negativas. Entonces, lo que hemos dicho con COVID-19, porque es nuevo, todavía no sabemos todo, pero algunos no se van a enfermar, algunos se van a enfermar, um, algunos van a tener problemas respiratorios, algunos van a ir al hospital sin complicaciones y algunos desafortunadamente van a tener complicaciones. 
the Yaclade, I just cleared that up. 19, not 20. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, uh, yeah, that question just came in. It's 19, they're not 20 cases. Okay, any other questions? Type them in, because uh, we're getting ready to go to our 11 o'clock call. Chief. Chief. Go ahead. Yeah, so uh, I've just been informed there's been some newly updated CDC guidelines that we need to include and mention within our our order and guiding documents. So we're going to send an amended. Uh, maybe Doc can, can talk to that, but I think it's section 12. Uh, but but we'll be resending uh, again as this is very fluid, right? So uh, an amendment or change to the uh, CDC guidelines. I'm being told by our legal department that we're going to have to update that. But but Doc, if if we can talk to what that that changes. Yes, Mr. City Manager. Yes, um, we had already advised yesterday that again the the processes, the guidelines are changing as we improve care. Um, and for and one of the major changes is when we suspected someone or was positive. Uh, we would put them in 14 days quarantine. That is no longer going to be done. It's seven days in quarantine or until they're asymptomatic. It may wind up being 14, 15, 16 days. It just depends on their symptoms. But everybody is recovering within that period. But it's no longer 14. Also, to um, release them from quarantine early on, people were being tested twice. Uh, and had to be negative, now there's no test. They have to be 72 hours free of any symptom and fever, and we can release them. They will get a letter from public health, signed by the health authority, that they have been released. They are no longer in quarantine. Efectivamente, las, las normas del Centro de Prevención de Enfermedades, la CDC, que es las guías que usamos, y luego las adoptan el, en Texas, el Departamento de Salud del Estado de Texas, y Laredo, el Departamento de Salud, que inicialmente personas positivas o personas altamente sospechosas se ponían en cuarentena por 14 días. Esa norma ya cambió. Ahora son 7 días o hasta que se acaben los síntomas, que la persona no tenga fiebre y no tenga síntomas respiratorios. También a las personas positivas para darles de alta Se les hacía dos análisis, tenían que ser negativos, ya no se va a hacer esa norma. Tienen que estar 72 horas libre de síntomas y sin fiebre, sin topar ningún medicamento, acetaminofóren, uh, por ejemplo, que no vayan a tener fiebre, no tengan síntomas, se les puede dar de alta, se les va a dar un oficio por parte de salud de que ya terminaron su cuarentena Ya están bien y pueden seguir con su vida rutinaria. Thank okay, you, doctor. I have, a, I, have a, I have a question for you, doctor, because uh, this has been asked. The governor and uh, has stated, and I believe the president at one point, related to people traveling back from New York or people traveling back from Louisiana into our community and the need for them to self quarantine. Can you give us advice as to that? Because I'm sure. That's kind of circulating all over the place as well. Yes. Uh, in fact, we were already doing that. So they're coming from the hot zones where they have severe outbreaks. New York specifically is what in, is in the order of the governor. But we've been doing that. You're coming from California, Washington State, where they have severe outbreaks. But it's not going to be 14 days following the CDC guidelines. It will be seven days in quarantine or until uh, they are totally asymptomatic. But yes, we we, we will have them under quarantine. Sí, efectivamente, por la orden del gobernador, y ya lo estábamos haciendo, personas que vengan de donde hay un brote serio como Nueva York, y la orden del gobernador, personas que vengan de, en, de Nueva York tienen que ponerse en, en cuarentena, pero además lo estamos haciendo con California y con Washington State, donde hay brotes severos, uh, eh, con el cambio de la norma, Este, no van a ser 14, van a ser 7 días de cuarentena o hasta que no tengan síntomas o fiebre. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Okay, this concludes our, our uh, 10 a.m. briefing. We all, uh, some of us have to go to an 11 o'clock operations meeting. So tomorrow we'll see you at the regular time at 12 noon uh, to continue on our daily discussions. 
Thank you all for everything you're doing, getting the word out for us. Stand by for the documents that will be sent to you all so you all can read them, digest them, and report on them and answer uh, questions to the public that ask you. Again, we appreciate your support in getting uh, the message out to the people. You all have a, a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow at noon. God bless us all. Bye-bye. This meeting is over.